Welcome everybody. I'm really pleased to have a chance to contribute to your discussion. I know you've got the A team there at the meeting and I think that's fantastic because this is a really important um, issue and I'm pleased to see so many of the leaders from around the world uh, together on it. Protection is at the core of our goal in the sector to reduce suffering in humanitarian crises and we have to see it as a collective responsibility for everybody working on humanitarian issues because the failure to protect people adequately is, as you all know better than me, the single biggest cause of humanitarian suffering. The IAC policy on protection from 2016 I think does a good job of outlining the basic steps we have to take collectively, globally and at the country level. We need solid evidence-based analysis, we need to develop a strategy, we then need to implement it in a serious way and we need to monitor progress. So what you're doing now I think is a good opportunity to take stock of how we're getting on understand what's working well, what's not working well, and what needs to change. And I want to offer four points as a contribution to your discussion. Firstly, this point I've already alluded to about protection as a collective responsibility. In some cases, I think the community does come together well to support better protection. I think that happened in Somalia to work on preventing the famine last year. We were much more successful than in 2011. Um, I think it um, has happened quite successfully actually in response to the Rohingya crisis in Bangladesh where we've been able to provide support and help to people including helping them cope with the psychological effects of the terrible things that happened to them while also at the same time continuing to highlight the dire conditions in Myanmar. And on Syria where we work to meet the needs of IDPs while at the same time highlighting their rights for freedom of movement and property and so on. Protection, of course, is led by the protection cluster, often with UNHCR colleagues in the lead. But protection isn't just the job of the protection cluster. One of the central things we need to do is make sure that across the whole humanitarian community, other people are playing their part. And many of the critical protection issues we face, like sexual and gender-based violence, demand the attention and the input of multiple clusters. Now obviously the intercluster coordination groups can help ensure that protection risks and vulnerabilities are understood and underpin the entire humanitarian response, but every cluster needs to take its responsibility. At the global level, most HRPs now include strategic objectives on protection and at the headquarters level, OCHA will continue to push for that and my office will play its role. Now at the country level, humanitarian coordinators, and it's fantastic that you've got some of our uh, leading humanitarian coordinators at the meeting, as well as humanitarian country teams, are obviously in charge and have a collective role in advocating with government and the parties uh, to conflict to fulfil their obligations to protect and ensure the well-being of people. And what I hope to see increasingly is that under the leadership of the humanitarian coordinators, the HCT as a team drive the protection agenda collectively together. My second point is that we have to be pragmatic and take a context-specific approach. Um, every crisis is different and um, the challenges we face vary from place to place and that is acknowledged in the 2016 policy. There's no point having a policy which is implemented in a blanket way everywhere because that doesn't reflect the results on the ground and so I want to empower you to take a pragmatic, locally relevant um, approach. Um, analysis of protection concerns and, and making sure the response is needs-based is the part of that, but then we need to give you the freedom to work out what to do in your circumstances. I do want to say that I think the needs and vulnerabilities of disabled people need a lot more attention. They're often overlooked and we need to do a much better job uh, for those people who are typically the ones left furthest behind and there are new guidelines in production um, to support that uh, globally. Being pragmatic also means focusing more on impact and less on process. The purpose of protection strategies is to provide clarity and focus, but it's clarity and focus for action, not the process itself. The third point I want to make is about the importance of taking an approach based on principles and advocacy and engaging parties to conflict on their responsibility to protect and changing their behaviour is perhaps the most difficult and sensitive component of this work. It's also, though, probably the most important. 
I don't think we're in a fantastic place on this globally. And in Berlin, I try to provide some analysis of why and what we can do about that, especially around international humanitarian law. Our engagement with parties at the local level to change behaviour and promote accountability and to ensure that humanitarian organisations can stay and deliver needs to be clear and coherent and determined. And our efforts also need to be mutually reinforcing. The last point I, I want to make and ask you to pay particular attention to relates to preventing sexual exploitation and abuse and sexual harassment and abuse. The exposure of some of the really bad things that have happened have been painful, I think, for all of us. Of course, even more painful for those people affected, the victims and the survivors. I hope you'll spend some time at this meeting thinking about how you can play your role in communicating and upholding our codes of conduct and our zero tolerance for such abuse. I think you all know at the principles level the IASC is very committed to upping the game of the whole sector on this and to strengthen our collective efforts and we are all asking you to uh, support us in doing that. So I hope over the next two days uh, you have discussions which are open and engaging, you draw on the diversity that you uh, have as a group, your perspectives, your experience. I am looking forward to seeing the outcome of your discussions and in particular to hearing your recommendations on what more you need from us at the principles level to ensure that we can do a better job to support the safety and dignity of people for no fault of their own caught up in humanitarian crises. Thanks a lot.